Right now, I'm going to show you a tool inside of Photoshop that enables you to completely relight your photos, and it's just incredible. It's the lighting effects filter. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, and today we're going to jump in and have a look at the lighting effects filter. So here's our first photograph here. And what we want to do is add some light in here. So why don't we go up under filter and it's under the render menu. Now this will only work inside of RGB mode. So if you see this grayed out, that's probably because you're in CMYK. Make sure you're in RGB. And this also works on all versions of Photoshop. Uh, changed a little bit in CS6, but if you're CS6 or above, it's going to look pretty much the same. All right, so what we want to do is under render, we're going to go down to the lighting effects filter. So we'll just click on here and this is going to bring up our lighting effects. So what we do is we actually end up in a new workspace and you can see by default, you just end up with this light. Now there's three different types of lights in here. Let me quickly explain what they are. Spotlight, and you can see what a spotlight does there is it casts a light coming from a particular light source. So maybe you'll take it a little off screen and we'll turn up our intensity and you can see it's like a spotlight just kind of coming down, right? The second type of light is a point light. A point light is a light that just, it's like having a light bulb in space. So, you know, wherever you put it, this is where it's going to light it up. And then the third type of light is an infinite light. So this light, what it does is it just moves in a particular direction and it lights evenly because it doesn't have any start or finish point. All it's doing is just literally just lighting it in a direction. I mean, I guess you could kind of liken this to the sun a little bit because the sun is so far away. But of course, uh, yeah, I mean, we could probably liken it to the sun. It's probably the easiest way to understand it. Okay, all of these lights, we have this little tool here that enables us to change the position of the light. And the other thing that really matters here is the intensity. So we can increase the intensity or lower the intensity and it just brightens that light. So you don't want it when it's blowing out like this. You want to just kind of balance it nicely where you're getting the right amount of light. The other big thing in here is we have the ability to click on colorize and this would be like putting a gel over a light. So if we click the red, notice there we're getting that red light now and it's just like putting a red gel over a light. Okay, so why don't I just reset this back to white. Let's just go back there. And in fact, I'll just reset the whole thing. If I just hit the Alt or the Option key, notice that the Cancel button turns into Reset, and this puts us back to here. So what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna start with a preset. And if you look under here, up on the left-hand side, you can also see you can add different lights. You can have more than one light at a time. Or we can go into the presets and just kind of start with these. Now, one of the ones I like to work with is the three down. So if you look down here, you'll see there's different types here. And one of them is called three down. So if I click on the three down, what essentially it does is it gives me three spotlights. And you can select the different lights by clicking on them here. So why don't we select the first light and now I want to make it brighter. Now I can go up here and I can increase the intensity or I can do it on screen just by clicking and dragging here. Different ways of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that light, make sure we've got it selected and then the center point is where I move it. So I want to resize this. So what I'm going to do is just bring it down and then I can click. Notice I can click and drag and what that's doing is that's changing the hotspot in here. So this hotspot is that super bright point and then it just kind of graduates out from there. So let's make it about the size we want, make it a little bit bigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a color. Click on color and we're gonna make this one blue. Click okay. Now I'm just gonna kind of move this around. If you go over these points here, you'll see you can rotate. And I wanna just kind of take that spotlight out of there a little bit and I'm going to grab on the top here. I just want to size it, resize it, make it a little bit smaller and see what I can do. I can change the shape of it by grabbing those side points. I can elongate it by adding the end point. And of course, if I move around the edge, I can just 
rotate it as long as I don't click on one of those points. And of course I can drag it to reposition it. All right, so why don't we just rotate this a little bit and I want this light to come down and let's move it forward more. So we don't want that hotspot right on there. We want it just a little off the screen and we're gonna cast some light down here. All right, so why don't we increase that intensity a little bit. Now, we'll come back to this light in a second because I wanna add another one. But let's grab this second light here. And if you don't want the light, notice you can select them on here too, one, two, or three. And in this case, we could just turn that off if we don't want it to illuminate. Or if you want to get rid of it, just hit the trash can. And I just want to work with two lights right now. So let's work with the second light here. And let's just rotate it around. And what I want to do with this one is I'm going to make this one an orange color. And we can increase the intensity. Now, if you feel like, wow, this is just not really bright, that's because you've got to watch you don't put too much color. Let me click on the color here. And if I pull this down to the left here, we're going to reduce the amount of color. So we're not putting quite so much on there. That's good. All right. And let's just kind of pull that down. Now this one's got a really big hot spot. We're going to pull this one back and let's increase that intensity. That's looking good. Now notice we don't see a lot outside of these lights. We want to kind of illuminate the rest of it. Well, this is what the ambience does. If we turn up the ambience, see what that does is that lights up the rest of the photo. So the ambience allows light to come through outside of that hotspot region. So why don't we just turn up the ambience and just kind of get it there. We might want to actually turn down our intensity now to compensate for that. And maybe lower our hotspot a little bit. So some of that light, well, let's just get it about there. So it's kind of coming from there. All right, that's looking pretty good. So let me just click OK. And we can see there that's that light. So if we want to look at this before and after, control Z, that's a before, there's after, and you can see we're able to add, you know, a colored light, like colored gels, one on each side, and it kind of adds a little something to the photo. Let's do something different though. Let's go in here, and this time we're going to light this scene here of this barrel. So I'm just going to just zoom out a little bit, and now we're going to go to the lighting effects. Filter, render, Lighting effects. Okay, so we've got all this stuff. What I'm going to do is just under the presets, let's just go down here. And I'm just going to click on default. And this is going to take me back to the setting. So this is how you get back to the original setting. And what I want to do is I want to add one light in here and we're going to illuminate this barrel, but we're also going to add some texture. So watch this. We're just going to rotate this round. And let's look at our spot right. Let's start here. We're going to increase our brightness. Make sure it's not too hot. And of course, we can change the size of that highlight there. So why don't we just make that hot spot about that big. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off to the edge. And I'm going to click and drag this down a little bit to make it bigger. So what we want to do is cast some light down here that's just going to be kind of falling around and catching some of this barrel. So let's increase it just a little bit there. Maybe I'll just give it a little bit of color. Click on the color here. And what I want to do is I just want to give it a little bit of yellow color. Not too much, just a touch. So notice I'm getting very, very subtle on it there. And of course, you know, we can adjust the intensity right here. And that's looking pretty nice for that kind of an effect that we want. All right, so we've got the spotlight, but everything else is too dark. What we want to do is just go on the ambience and we're just going to turn that up just a little bit just to illuminate the rest of the room just a little bit. And then we might have to come back and compensate if that's a little too hot. Now we can turn that intensity back down just a little. There we go. But one thing happens if you've ever looked at light, particularly cross light, it performs very differently than frontal light. If you light something front on, it's usually very flat and it doesn't show texture, which is why it's used a lot on beauty lighting. If you look at uh, beauty and makeup, fashion, a lot of the time you're going to see that light's going to be there. You know, you use a beauty dish or a softbox and you're casting that light directly onto the face and it's not showing textures. It's not showing the pores. It's smoothing out the skin. It's not showing wrinkles, things like that. Very flattering. 
But when you want to bring out texture in lighting, you do a side light. You throw a light across the side, and as that hits the texture, it creates those shadows, and those shadows reveal the texture. So it would be more realistic to have a little more texture here when we apply this effect. Let's have a look. So what I'm going to do here is go under the texture channel, and here's your RGB channels. Let's just choose red. And I don't want to give it a lot. We can control the amount of texture here. I'm just going to give it one. And look what happens. Notice how suddenly it has this texture hitting it. Now, of course, it's coming from a certain direction. If you wanted to go the other direction, you would choose negative one. And of course, that looks a little weird because that lighting is now coming from the wrong side. So we definitely want it to go one. So let's go here, select that one. You can see it's casting those shadows and bringing out the texture a little bit more like what would happen in real life with those lighting. So let's click OK to apply it. And there it is with a little bit of texture there. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see it. See that texture there? So that's looking pretty good. Now, sometimes a preview you see inside the lighting effect is going to exaggerate a little bit what you're going to see in reality. So if we do this and we do the undo lighting effects, that there it was before, redo, there it is after. You see we've dramatically changed that image. And one of the things I kind of used to be known for quite a while back was creating these photorealistic images, such as the camera and the guitar. And one of the tricks I have in here is I actually use the lighting effects to create some kind of a texture or depth where I literally chisel out uh, different shapes. So one of the things I used to be known for uh, a number of years ago was creating photorealistic imagery such as this camera and guitar and different things like that. And really where that came from was retouching. I was doing so much in retouching that I realized, you know, I'm recreating so much of the photo. What if I start without the photo? And that's literally how I got started doing that, just using different retouching techniques. Now, one of the tools I did use a lot was the lighting effects. And you can actually go and create a custom texture channel and do all kinds of things with that. And maybe that's a tutorial for another day if you guys are interested in that. Well, let me know in the comments and I'll show you how I do it. But anyway, um, how did you guys enjoy this? Let me know in the comments if you learned anything new. And also, do you think these lighting effects are something you could use in your photography and your compositing. Uh, personally, it's something I use all the time. I love it. It's a great tool to have up your sleeve. And by the way, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, welcome to the Cafe crew. Uh, join us by hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you here every week when we do a new tutorial. Turn on those notifications so you know when I upload, which is every Tuesday. And right now during this global pandemic, while we're all kind of in lockdown, uh, we're having weekly uh, live streams on Thursdays for the Cafe Crew, Lockdown Cafe. So come and join us um, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I'd love to see you guys in a couple of days. Um, so anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.